And again, today is, oh, Monday, the 8th of August, and I'm speaking with the Rakestraws. And Ms. Rakestraw, would you tell me your first name again, ma'am? Alberta. 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 And your maiden name? Lee. Lee. Uh-huh. And that was your family, the Lees? Uh -huh. And tell me again, when you all got married? We got married November the 1st. 1941. And then Pearl Harbor, December the 7th, 1941. Remember that, that, that stuff? I don't remember too much. Only thing I uh, wasn't too much interested in keeping up, you know, with the war mm -hmm. at that time. And I don't remember too much, but that everybody was afraid and excited. And I had just gotten married. How old were you when you were married? 29. Gosh, um, and where did, where did you go upon, be, upon being married? Where, upon where, where being, was your first home? My first, I got married at my grandmother's home, which is right down the street from me now. Mm -hmm. And uh, I went to Jefferson with my husband. Mm -hmm. And I stayed there until he was drafted. From November to June, I stayed in Jefferson with him. And when he was drafted, went in service, I came back home to my grandmother. How old was your grandmother? My grandmother was 90 when she passed. I don't know uh, exactly how old she was then. But I do remember when she passed after, that was after he came back home, she passed, and she was in at that age. Had you, had you been with her and your family? Yeah, my, gr my grandmother that I lived with was my mother's mother, my mother's mother. And I had lived with her practically all my life, you know, because my mother passed when I was six years old, and my grandmother reared me. Did you have brothers, sisters, or cousins? I had no sisters, only girl, and I had four brothers. Were they older or younger? Two younger and two older. I was the middle between two brothers, four brothers, two older and two younger. They all have passed. And I'm alone now. Well, you must have felt lonesome when your husband shipped overseas. Oh, I certainly was lonesome. Certainly was. But I came back home and stayed with my grandmother till he, till he returned from the army. Was there? A lot of work for everyone, at least around the house? During the war? Uh-huh. Yes, it was. But we kept busy. What kind of a house was it? My grandmother's house. Mm -hmm. We lived in a small house down the street. And uh, just my grandmother and me was a small house. I think we had about three rooms. Who built that house? That house that I lived in. That grandmother's house. I don't know who built it because uh, the house that we lived in at one time was my aunt's house. And when my aunt died, my grandmother was living in it. But the house that really belonged to my grandmother, her home house, that house is still there. It's down the street here. It's an old house and it's still there. And the one that we lived in, the smaller house that we lived in with my grandmother was really my aunt's house, and I don't know who built it. That's been hundreds of years ago. <laughs> <laughs> hundreds of years ago. Oh, I say a hundred years ago. Could, could you all write letters? Who? 
husband? Yeah, we corresponded during the war. Oh, uh, I don't know how long it took for a letter to go from here, from the United States to see, but I heard from him quite often. We wrote, we exchanged letters, and during the whole time he was gone, when he was in Casablanca, I remember getting letters from him. Probably got some of those old letters laying around here now. Let's go, cause I kept them all for keepsake. Glad you did. <laughs> Folks will probably get a kick out of reading us. Uh-huh. <laughs> um, when you get letters back and forth, did they, did they have little blocks censored by the Army and all? Uh, yeah, they were all censored. Uh-huh. I um, think we must have had information on what we could write about. Mm-hmm. Because the letters were censored. Can you tell me a little something about Athens in those days? But during the war. Mm -hmm. Oh, well, I don't know uh, what we did. I don't know what how what we did for amusement. It was just really it was just trying times during the war. Uh, People were always afraid of what was going to happen, you know, to their loved ones. And it just took a lot of joy out of, you know, what you expected. But I think they were good times and bad times. I remember we were all young, husbands mostly gone abroad, and we, a bunch of wives, used to get together and play games. We used to play Pekina a lot. We had nothing else to do, so we'd play Pekina for pennies, just anything for enjoyment. Go from house to house, place to place, and get together and have fun playing games. Mm. No, when I heard of Pekina. Pekina? Uh-huh. You never heard of it? I can't remember. <laughs> you tell me Ho something about it? Pokina. Uh -huh. Oh, you play, you play Pokina with the uh, cards, mm -hmm. you know, and you have a board. And when you call the card, you cover your board. So when you cover the board, you cover Pokina, you win the prize. Or you win the money. If you're going to play for money, you win the money. Whichever. Uh-huh. If you play for prizes, you win the prize. Whatever. You cover your board with the card that's being called. <laughs> I haven't played Bikina in a long time. I don't know whether they still play Bikina now or not. It's been so long since I've played it. Were your brothers called to serve overseas as well? My brothers? Uh -huh. I had no. I had one brother that was in service, but he never did go overseas. He was stationed in Brooklyn, New York during the time. The, a wall. That was my younger brother, my youngest brother. But my other brothers did not go into service. Um, were there street cars around there, here in those days? The street what? Were there street cars? Oh, back then? Mm -hmm. No, we didn't have street cars during the war. It was, I think, street cars went out of existence before the war, I believe. But I remember street cars running in Athens. I remember riding street cars in Athens. But I think they had, uh, had uh, discontinued street cars and put buses on to run during the war time. Can you tell me about some of the, some of the churches during, during the war? Churches How in, did that change? Uh -huh. in Athens mm -hmm. during the war. I don't remember any changes among the churches that took places. I always attended uh, the church across the street from here, and I don't remember uh, any changes in church activities. 
I was just wondering if there were fewer people. Huh? I was wondering if there were fewer people. Fewer people, and then I imagine so. But I, I don't remember because I, I probably spent most of my time at church over across the street from here. Was it unusually hot or cold during that time? Hot. Did you have enough to eat? Oh well, we had we had enough to eat, but there are certain foods that were rationed. Uh -huh. You know, you had to be limited on to how much you could buy. But we never suffered for food, I don't think. Such as bacon. I remember sugar and bacon being rationed. And you could buy uh, uh, so much. Where did you tend to do your grocery shopping for, for sugar or bacon? Up at, uh, up at Five Points. <laughs> and who was the grocer in Five Points in those days? Up there at Bell's. Bell's was I don't there know. back then? Yeah, I, I don't know. I've, seen, I've met you at Bell's, but... Yeah, I've always uh, bought food at Bell's. Was Bell's there during World War II? If it wasn't Bell's, it was the same place, same location. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. We've always shopped up there. I don't know whether Bell's was market, but it was the same. We had always had uh, grocery stores up there at Five Point. Um, can you tell me how it felt to know the war was coming to an end? How f during the war? Mm -hmm. Felt like the war was coming to an end. The, felt the well. I, what I asked was how it felt to know that the war was coming to an end. Oh, the war. I felt mm -hmm. that was a good feeling to think that it was coming to an end. It really was a grand and glorious feeling to think that the war was soon be over. Because there were, in fact, it were hard times. It wasn't all that hard that you couldn't survive, but it, we did have hard times. And for me to know that my husband was coming home, now you know that was a grand and glorious feeling. When was the first you knew he was back home stateside? Back home to stay? Mm-hmm. Oh, when he first came back from overseas, he came to visit, but he still wasn't you know, wasn't uh, dismissed from the army. Yes, ma'am. Uh huh. But when uh, he told you about he was in Florida and he got sick and they sent him to the hospital up there above Atlanta at Lawson Jail, and he was, he was, he was really dismissed from the army from the hospital. I don't remember 1945. But I don't remember dates, but it was a happy time that he was being dismissed out of the army, you know. When did you move out of, uh, when did you move out of uh, your, your grandmom's? Oh, move out of my grandmom? Uh-huh. Oh, I stayed in the same house, you see, she passed. And after her death, uh, my husband and I stayed in the same house until we built this house. That must have taken a few years. Yeah. Was there something? Was there a? Was there something you did to celebrate when he came back from the war? Something I did not celebrate. So was there? Was, was there anything you you? You did to celebrate when when he came back. I don't quite understand. Well, I I just was <laughs> that I did not celebrate. No, I I was just I was just asking how it felt to be back together again. That's all. Oh, that was such a happy feeling. <laughs> that was uh, a happy feeling to have him back. Oh, I do remember one little incident. 
I was uh, down in Watkinsville. I was a supply teacher at a school down in Watkinsville. And I remember when he came back, still in uniform, the children were more happy, uh, just as happy as I was. He came to visit our school, visit my classroom, and he talked to the children about some of his experience. And the children had dinner for him, and they brought what they thought was my favorite dish, turnip greens. So we had turnip greens for dinner and all the good fried chicken and different things that the parents had for the children to bring. And we had a big dinner at uh, Rosenwald School. And it was in honor of my husband coming home. Rachel, do you remember that? Yeah. <laughs> and uh, I think that the first time I had to go for Told make a speech publicly. Yeah. You made a speech publicly that day. Yeah, you Before know, the children. A, to a group. I hadn't uh, been before. Uh, not, I didn't think I wasn't used to it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But they seem to have been as happy yeah. as I was to have him back from the, you know, back from overseas. How long had you been teaching the, them, those children? Oh, I taught a, I taught a whole term that year down in Watkinsville at the Rosenwald School. Was that right on, on the square in Watkinsville or off? A little Don't bit you? down, uh, no, not right in town, off the square. Uh, I think that's 15. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. That where that Rosen? I'd like to find out. No, no, that was a. They don't. They don't have a school down there anymore, Ray Strong. I mean, there's a building that's still there. I don't know. I don't know. I know the Rosenwald School. That was in Jackson County. Isn't there anymore? They don't tore it down. I don't know whether this strike. Uh, it. They call it uh, Ed Stroud School. Everybody call it Ed Stroud School. I don't know whether it's still there or not. I'll ask around. That was on going off 15. Is that uh, number 15? Yeah. So you taught there one whole term. Was yeah. that Why? the spring? Yeah, from, from September to me. That's a whole year. Yeah, I call it a term. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, our race draw was in service. So I taught there, you know, one term. Teachers were scarce and I was a supply. How old were your students? My students. My students uh, were third and fourth grade. Mm -hmm. Were there about 30 of them? How many would you say? I imagine about 30. Um, how early, what time in the morning would you have to get up to go to school? We had to be at eight o'clock. And I rode with another teacher that was here, lived in Athens. You know, they would come by and pick me up and, uh, off we'd go down the road to school. And, uh, you know, there were buses running too. And, uh, yeah, like I said, during the war, streetcars had gone out of existence. They were running buses, I imagine. Because we got a bus, we could get a bus at Five Point and, and get off the bus a few blocks from where we taught school. And we used to ride the bus going down there too. You can't do that these days. Huh? They don't have those buses anymore. Mm -mm. But we used to ride the bus. We'd get on the bus at Five Point and uh, get off there at the intersection and walk down a few blocks to our school. 
Was that your first experience teaching? No, it wasn't. First time I taught schools before I married. And that was in Walton County. <laughs> mm -hmm. And did you did you teach a whole term then? Uh-huh. Same uh, Same group. Same group of children. <laughs> Third and fourth grades. Uh-huh. Was the schoolhouse any different in Walton County? It was the same kind of Rosenwald School. And there was three teachers. I three had teachers in, in Walton County. But I think down here in Watkinsville, we had four teachers. Yeah, we had more. We had four teachers in Watkinsville. But it was, uh, I remember only in Walton County. But I would have continued teaching if I had, had uh, went on back to college and got my degree. But I decided that I wanted to take care of my grandma because she's beginning to get old and beginning to get feeble. And, and I decided I'd rather stay home and take care of my grandmother than to try to go on and work hard and go back to school. So you were probably a teacher for one year before you got married? How many years do you think that was? Oh, before I got married? Mm -hmm. Oh, just about a year. And for that one year is all? During, during all the teaching. Uh -huh. All the teaching. Yeah. yeah, I'm trying to figure out how, how long you spent teaching grand total. Oh, that was just about all. <coughs> That's just about all the teaching that I did. <coughs> and then during the war. And you went to school here on, on in Athens. Athens, on Baxter Street. Mm -hmm. at Union Baptist Institute and then I further took training in summer school you know I took a few college courses in summer school but I didn't ever you know spend time you know on the college campus to get a degree I only took summer school courses I gave that up to in fact, I'd rather have rather been a teacher more than I've ever done. But I gave up teaching and went in the insurance business, and I retired in the insurance business. How I long? worked at Atlanta Life. I, I worked with the Atlanta Life 20. I I don't know how many years. 27. Huh? Is that what it said up there on that? Plaque, 27, huh? Yeah. That long? Yeah. <laughs> uh, see them plaques up there on the oh. I sure do. I forgot how long. I worked with the Atlanta Life Insurance Company. I retired it in insurance business. But that wasn't what I wanted to do, but that's what I end up doing. I would like to have been a teacher because I love teaching more than anything else. But I did very little of that. But I spent most of my working days in Atlanta Life Insurance Company. Golly. Um, where was that office? Atlanta Life. Uh-huh. We were downtown uh, on Washington Street. Uh, you probably don't remember that building that they called the Samaritan Building. Well, the Moulton Building. Yeah, above the Moulton Theater. The Moulton Theater. And next to the Moulton is the Payne Building. That was a once an undertaker shop. Mm -hmm. And then there was the Samaritan Building. And, uh, uh, I uh, started working with the Atlanta Life while we were in the Samaritan building. Then uh, we moved there on Broad Street uh, near the corner of church. Yeah, church. Church. We moved there. And then they have moved again uh, over on Broad Street 
uh, after I retired on Broad Street near uh, I don't know over there near Magnolia Street and they moved from there over on Broad and Billup Street and the local recently have discontinued here in Athens. Mm. They've discontinued. So we don't have an don't have an office for Atlanta Life in Athens now. Isn't that the business that the Herndon uh -huh. started? Yeah. I saw about that Herndon home in Atlanta, that big mansion the other that's, day. That's like, right. See that. That's the Mr. Herndon that was the founder of the Atlanta Life Insurance mm -hmm. Company. Well, I didn't realize y'all had spent so long. Uh huh. Twenty-seven. You now. I I stayed there twenty-seven years. And Joe had gone back to doing some carpentry, uh -huh. some as well. Uh huh. I went to Atlanta Life after I came out of service. Mm hmm. And I stayed there twenty-seven years and retired with Atlanta Life. What sort you of? Work for the for the company that I was working for. Pilgrim. Yeah, I worked for the Pilgrim Insurance Company. I didn't work with the Pilgrim very long, you know. I was just helping you out. <laughs> Can you tell me what sort of responsibility we were doing? I did. Mm -hmm. Well, when I was with Atlanta Life, I started with as a clerk, a sick claim clerk, and I worked there, uh, I think, about nine years as a clerk, and then I was promoted to cashier. So I was in charge of taking care of pay, paying out all the money, taking in all the money, and paying out all the money as a cashier. I did it, but I didn't like it all that much. I'd rather have been somewhere fooling with little children. <laughs> uh -huh.